Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about a really crucial concept in physics called terminal velocity. And so maybe you are a physics student or even a physical science or an AP physics student who wants some insight into this crucial concept. I'm going to try to do this in under three minutes. So let's take a look at this. My first question is, will the skydiver continue to get faster and faster as long as he has height to fall? So here you see skydivers jumping out of an airplane. And the question is, as long as they can continue to fall, will they continue continue to get faster and faster forever as they accelerate towards the earth? And the answer surprisingly maybe is no. They will be accelerating in free fall acceleration for the first part of their fall, but because they're falling from such a great height, as they fall through the air, there's going to be significant air resistance or drag that pushes back on them. One way to think about this is if you've ever stuck your hand out of a window of a car as it's moving, don't recommend it, but let's say you're doing that at 20 miles an hour, you would feel resistance. Well, if you did that at 40 miles an hour, that would not be a good idea, but there would be much greater resistance. Well, what if you were falling at a great rate, a very high speed, you could figure out that, yeah, there would be a lot greater air resistance there, kind of like a wind's pushing back against your arm. And this would be a similar concept that you would experience if you jumped out of an airplane. So let's think about what that is and how it relates to what we have learned in the past about forces and acceleration. So first of all, let's get a definition of the terminal velocity going. So the terminal velocity definition we're going to use is we're going to say the maximum velocity at which an object falling through a fluid like air air can be thought of as a fluid because it flows will achieve and as time goes on the drag force or the air resistance becomes equal to the gravitational force let me show you what I'm talking about here when the parachutist jumps out of the plane they just are in free fall they just have one major force one significant force affecting them and that's the force due to gravity all right fair enough well after falling for a little while What's going to happen is you will have a greater air resistance and it will be somewhat significant. So we would draw a free body diagram like this, labeling that backwards air resistance force. We could also call it drag force. That's its technical name. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Well, if you allow enough time, those two forces would become equal and opposite. So does this mean that the object just stops in midair? No, of course not. This means that the object continues at that constant speed or velocity, and that velocity is called terminal velocity. So it's not that it stops moving, it's that it stops accelerating. So if there is no net force, you can still have an object moving at a constant velocity, and that is a misconception a lot of students really struggle to let go of. No net force means that the object is either not moving or it's moving at a constant velocity. And in this case, that constant velocity is called terminal velocity. So I tried to do this under three minutes, maybe didn't quite get it there. But more importantly, you guys get the idea, hopefully. If you have any comments down below, please let me know. And just know that I'm going to be covering all of the major ideas in physics throughout the entire year. And in case you've had calculus or are in calculus and you want to do some calculations with drag force and learn how to do that, I'm going to put a link in the upper right for being able to handle the calculations of drag force. In any case, hopefully this has been helpful, and I hope you all have a great day. Take care.